Hello. Oh, now I can hear you. <laughs> by Sophie Rolston. Sophie, thank you so much for joining me. Now, I'm really excited to hear your story. So I do want to start at the very beginning. So please, can you just tell us a bit how you got into racing? Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> uh, I grew up in Ireland, in Galway, and I am not from a horsey background at all. We didn't have horses, um, but I just loved them. I was obsessed with them. I don't know why, I don't know where I came from. Um, I started helping out at a riding school and for the, the work I did, they gave me lessons in return. So that's how I learned to ride. And I was there every Saturday and during the summer, whenever I could be. And I remember working there once and somebody said to me, oh, you're small enough to be a jockey. And at the time I kind of went, yeah, I'd like to be a jockey. <laughs> and that was it. The seed was planted and I, the, the little idea never left me. And uh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> Oh, nice. I was just going to say, my partner's from, well, he's from near Galway, Mayo. Is that near? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When did you come over to the UK then? Was it for your career? Yeah, it was. So I went through the Irish Racing School, the Racing Academy and Centre of Education. Um, prior to that, I'd been in the pony racing circuit a little bit. Um, I worked for a trainer called Tony Vegan. Uh, he'd be happy with the shout out. <laughs> um, and um yeah, the, the racing school said to me, Sophie, there is more racing in the UK. There, there might be more opportunities for you as you're a girl. And um, I said, yeah, why not? So I moved over when I was 18. I worked for Pat Phelan in Epsom for five years. And um, yeah, I pretty much moved on to Dean Ivory after that. I had a short stint with Robert Mills, but he isn't training anymore. And um, yeah, now I've been at Dean's for almost two years now. So when you left the racing school, did they help you uh, kind of give you like a pathway of where to go and who to sort of contact? Oh, they did. Yeah, they were very good. Uh, I remember once they actually sent somebody over to visit me and check up that everything was going all right. Oh, that's yeah, they're very, very good. Very professional. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, were you nervous when you first came over? Yeah, of course. Um, but I was excited too. Um, I, I remember one day that I kind of realised Oh, I, I can actually do whatever I want now and my parents aren't here to tell me off <laughs> I mean I didn't go mad or anything but there was a lovely sense of freedom and independence okay, so you came over from Ireland then to the UK and then you started work now I think I read somewhere that you stopped for a while is that correct I did um I had one year out in 2015 um where I just I just didn't have a jockey's license for that year uh, I was still riding out a little bit, but I sort of explored other career options um, just to make sure that I, there was some other kind of a job that I'd be able to do when I'm finished being a jockey. And uh, I worked in a pub for a little while. Uh, I even actually worked in a bookmaker's for a little bit uh, as a courier driver. <laughs> yeah. Um, if that was it, working in the bookmaker's was nice to see the other side of racing, actually. Um, it was nice to meet the punters and to understand you know and to, to really fully understand they're only angry at jockeys and that when they've lost some money but really if they were to meet a real life jockey they're lovely people and they're very happy to meet them and talk to them and ask them a hundred questions um so yeah once I um you know I was satisfied okay yeah I could walk into another job and I'd be all right I wouldn't be jobless after I'm finished being a jockey um but then it also made me realize I really want to to be a jockey so I went back <laughs> when you're in the bookmakers it was on the, the tvs all the time so what actually made you think i'm gonna go back into racing was it maybe seeing it all the time yeah a little bit yeah i um I, I felt like maybe that i had unfinished business or you know sitting here watching it on the tv there's no buzz and thrill where i i knew that what the thrill felt like to race and i thought yeah i can't be standing here watching it all the time <laughs> gotta get back in the saddle <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so then how did you plan on getting back into the back into racing if you had some time off? Um, I was kind of riding out still for Pat Phelan at the time. And I remember just going back to him. Will you have me back full time? And can I have a license again? And he kind of went, oh, but, but he said, yeah. And of course, he supported me. He was a great boss. Uh, but I just moved on from there uh, when I did because um, 
he only had a small number of horses and um we we spoke a lot about um you know who maybe i should go to and that kind of thing and uh, i had started riding out for dean ivory and I rode a winner for him um, before I started working for him. And uh, yeah, Pat supported me. He was very good. Um, I was sad to leave that there because it, that was a great job. Um, but I needed to go somewhere new to earn more opportunities where there's more horses for me to race. And yeah, I haven't looked back since. You actually um, advertised yourself, wasn't it, in the racing post. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I did. Um, so... In 2018, I won one of the apprentice competitions, the um, apprentice training series. So I'd had a really good year. Uh, I was getting quite a few rides. And when I turned 26 years old, because I'm actually 28 years old, um, I um, became a professional. Um, so that meant I could still claim, but I couldn't ride in apprentice races anymore. And I just felt that I wasn't getting so many rides and um, you know, I, I was desperate because I was I was saying to people, I can still claim you can still use me. The only races I can't ride in are apprentice races. And I was riding out a little bit here and there. But, um, you know, I, I, I enjoy being a reliable member of staff as well. I want to be here full time for the trainer I'm working for and, you know, be good to him. And um, so I just thought, oh, I need to, to contact people somehow and just let them know, you know, I'm still here. I can do any weight. I'm, you know, dying to ride in races. So I just, uh, yeah, I wrote a, le a letter to the Racing Post. <laughs> and uh, I think um, at the time I sort of, like, I felt, oh, this could backfire. You know, I don't know how other jockeys will, you know, they might say, oh, you know, Sophie, who do you think you are kind of thing. But actually only positive stuff came from it. And I read it back today just before this interview, just to, um, you know, just refresh my memory. And I like I even sort of say to myself, yeah, but, you know, there was no, no harm came from it. Why? Why not have done it? And yeah, you know, and the same still, still applies. I'm still riding. <laughs> if trainers want to use me, you know, I'm here. Did the racing post take it then when you um when you sent that in that letter were they sort of quite welcoming to it maybe did they say you know perhaps write your advert differently uh no yeah um they they didn't change anything they uh, accepted it for what it was and said oh that's a real interesting piece Sophie and to be honest I wasn't even sure whether they would actually publish it but they did and um so much came from that uh, I was actually invited onto um BBC radio to talk about it and I was thinking, you know, it's just a letter, like, but um, yeah, uh, then I, I had a couple of rides come from the letter. And I always said, even if I got just one extra ride, it would have been worth it. Just one new contact. And yeah, I, I, that did happen. Uh, so, um, yeah. And then I, yeah, the Racing Post interviewed me after that. Um, the, you know, the piece where they ask you a whole lot of questions about yourself. And that was quite nice. I enjoy all that. <laughs> Yeah, good came from it but before you did yeah. it, did you ever have anyone just say oh I don't know if you should do that maybe make you not want to do it uh no because I didn't discuss it with anybody I just oh. did it <laughs> that's yeah. probably the best thing to do actually just go ahead and do it no I think yeah. because it's almost like thinking outside the box isn't it just kind of thinking how else can I do that do you know anyone else that does that kind of thing now since you've done it um, no, I, I don't know of anyone who's doing something unusual like that, but uh, I'm not actually on any social media myself. So maybe it's happening a little bit on social media and I don't know about it, but I keep off social media myself. <laughs> oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Do I don't, I think um, jockeys are sort of, um, you know, these, you'd have people sending quite abusive messages and I just, you know, I know myself when I've given one a bad ride. I don't need anyone else to tell me. So I'm not going to open myself up to all that. Do you reckon you'll ever get social media? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, there is some people encouraging me saying you maybe should do. But uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think I'd spend too much time on it, actually. I'd, I'd need to be like really keeping on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. I was going to say, does some jockeys have to have someone run their social media for them because they haven't got time? yeah I'd imagine so yeah I don't know what, where they'd have time to do it so yeah probably <laughs> yeah, I would love now to skip back um in the story to uh your first ride do you remember your first ride 
Yeah, I do. Uh, I actually finished second on my first ride. I don't remember much about the race itself, but I remember the, the buzz. And even though I'd done pony racing, there was some other thrill about riding on a bigger track. And, you know, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. And um, then on the same horse, only a few days later, I won my second race. Uh, so I got off to a really good start. Uh, it went a little bit downhill for a while after that. But that's racing. There's ups and downs. And I think it was always going to be slightly difficult for a while after getting off to such a good start. Um, you know, there, there was there was going to be a few bad days, of course. You know, there's a lot of losing that happens in racing when you're a jockey. Um, yeah, so th that was lovely. How do you stay positive and, you know, keep focused and your eye on the prize, essentially? Uh, well I yeah keep off the social media because I don't want to hear or see any negative stuff um, um, you just it's um, something that you learn to get used to you're never fully used to it you know it's um, you put so much work and effort and all your time and you dedicate yourself completely and it is frustrating when you you lose or you know if you've done something wrong yourself and you kind of know it or maybe you haven't done anything wrong and the horse just hasn't performed for you. Um, but you just um, kind of have to compartmentalize and put it to one side and just focus on the positive things. And yeah, it can be difficult enough sometimes, um, but it's just something you have to try to get used to. And it's part of the job and you just have to accept it and then go, okay, right, move on. I've learned this from that experience. Let's go next time. But sometimes in the position that I'm in now you know if, if you do if something goes wrong because there are so many other jockeys um it's you know you kind of need to be getting it right and then you're putting this extra pressure on yourself so it is hard but you know you have to you know we're only human <laughs> how do you prepare for a race um I um if if I knew, um, you know, two days before, OK, there's 12 horses in the race, I'm in gate seven or whatever. Um, just, you know, write down everything that I do know. I do. T I, I love, you know, making lists of things. So I'll write down a few bits and pieces Um, just uh, check who um, who might make the run in in the race or um, that kind of thing. I'd watch back replays of other horses running and try to prepare myself as best I can. So. Um, if I can have an image in my head of exactly how I would like the race to go and what I want to do, um, I will, you know, I'll do my best to do that. But then you also need a sort of a plan B and a plan C. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because it goes so quickly and, you know, if you're just yeah. starting out in the race, if you've got an idea how you think it may go, but then it changes. How do you kind of deal with that? Because it is so quick. It's so quick and that does throw you a little bit. And um, say if you were meant to be, up near the front and you look round and you realize oh my god I'm at the back yeah you need to you need to then go okay accept I'm here now and then be looking ahead and thinking okay I need to weave my way up through there as we turn the last home bend for home or or whatever and keep an eye out on horses that um look like they're coming off the bridle and they might suddenly come backwards uh yeah you just and that's you just learn the more you rise the more you learn how to cope with that and if you're in but, front, yeah. how do you keep an eye on them when they're behind, you know, like, because I suppose you can't hear either because the it's going so quick in the wind. Yeah, you can't hear them, actually. Yeah, with the wind um, shadows would help sometimes. Um, but you just need to trust yourself that um, you're going the correct pace. And um, if you're going very slow, a few of them will shout from behind, go on. <laughs> and if you're going very fast, I mean, you're not going to know unless you look behind. Um, you just need to trust your own instincts and, you know, and the horse and do your best to go as sensibly and consistently as you can. And, um, you know, that's, you know, and then I keep remember where the line is and where you want to be right, build, build enough to, to go to, to make your sprint for home. Yeah. And as I say, if you've you know, studied the other horse's forms and then they're not performing how you thought they would, I suppose that, you know, throws things into the mix as well, because then you've got to think about that and, yeah it does um i remember once um one of the jockeys told me okay i'm i'm gonna make the running sophie and i'll go nice and fast and i was saying oh okay i was told to make the running and then i discussed it with my trainer and they the trainer said to me okay if they're going just follow them it's all right you know they'll go a good gallop and they jumped out got to the front and went really slow 
Um, but I didn't have the experience at the time to to realize, okay, right, they're going slower than they said they would and to go and go past them or sit beside them or push, you know. Um, yeah, so that's, it's just all learning and experience.